In the past few years, Apple is promoting the iPad as a full desktop replacement. And now more than ever, that holds true. It's a very capable thin and light device that can be as fast as a laptop and can also perform a lot of the tasks a desktop computer would. But as we all know, hardware is nothing without software, and especially without a capable operating system. iOS 13, Apple's newest iteration of iOS, tries to address the needs of pro users and the fact that a tablet form factor has different requirements compared to a phone. As a result, a lot of changes have been made to the way iOS works on the iPad. With iOS 13, Apple's tablet feels closer to its full potential. There's a ton of great features, but in this video I want to focus on just one, and that's Sidecar. What is Sidecar? If you haven't guessed already, Sidecar allows us to use the iPad as an extra screen for the Mac. And let me tell you, it's amazing. There were other third-party applications available before iOS 13 that could do this sort of thing, but they were costly and of course required installing extra things not only on the iPad, but on the computer as well. Sidecar comes right out of the box ready to use. We don't need to install anything other than the iOS 13 update. And most importantly, it comes at no extra cost. Sidecar is a great example of what Apple can do best, creating seamless experiences that just work. So to use the iPad as a secondary monitor, we just select it from a drop down in the menu bar here. And that is it. We now have an extra screen where we can drag stuff around. It couldn't get any simpler than that. Of course, we can control the placement of the screen like with any other monitor. So, since it's on my right side, I'm going to place it to the right. So now I can create a finder window, for example, and drag it to the right. And now it's on the iPad. There are a couple more options available there, like having the MacBook touch bar controls or for example bringing up other key controls to the right side of the screen, but after using the feature for several weeks now, I found out that apart from the fact that these things take valuable screen space, they also don't make things so much easier. So I ended up using the iPad exactly how I would use a secondary monitor. Where things get really interesting though, is the fact that Sidecar is more than just a simple desktop extension or a Wacom uh, Intuos replacement. It certainly can be used that way, but it feels more than that. Let me give you an example. Let's uh, use this Evernote document here. I can start typing my text, but let's say I want to move it to the iPad screen. I can either drag the window to the iPad, like we do with any other monitor, or I can use this new option added in Catalina OS X's new version. This grabs the whole window and pushes it to the iPad while ensuring that it fits nicely on the screen. Since I already have a keyboard connected to the iPad, the system is smart enough to know that it can use that as an input. So I can continue writing as if I'm using the iMac's keyboard. Whether I use the keyboard from the iMac or the iPad, it doesn't make a difference. The system is smart enough to know that it can use both. That is just nice. When I first started experimenting with Sidecar, I tried using the iPad without the keyboard, and the whole experience, at least for me, was terrible. I constantly had to go into this mode where I was trying to figure out how to do things. It was especially difficult trying to emulate shortcuts or specific app workflows. But when I realized I could use the keyboard and of course the pen as a mouse input, my experience with Sidecar was completely transformed. It feels like working with a tiny MacBook. We have the ability to use the iPad in a wired mode, but I think the best experience in terms of flexibility was when the iPad was connected to the computer through regular Wi-Fi. There is no noticeable lag. There are times in some heavy applications where you would see a small stutter, but it's nothing deal-breaking. At least, that's what I think so far with the limited time I have with the Sidecar. I didn't notice any major issues. Let's see though how things are with other applications. Let's load up Cinema. First off, seeing Cinema on the iPad is just amazing. Let's see though how well we can work on this uh, small space. I'm going to create a cube, and by using the keyboard I can pan around, I can zoom in and out, and I can rotate. As you can see, it feels super smooth. Let me bring in a cloner, and I'll drop the cube into the cloner, and adjust things to my liking. Basically, everything works the way you expect it to. Let me load up a scene that has some animation to it. 
everything plays back normally without any lag. That is just amazing. It feels so awesome that we can just do this sort of thing. Of course, I wouldn't imagine myself working on this small screen for an extended period of time, but for short bursts, you can move your work in another part of your house with absolutely zero fuss. And then you can come back to your desktop and finish up your project. The screen real estate is not so bad. I'm using the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, so there's a bit more space compared to the smaller sized iPads. I can imagine that using a smaller screen will probably feel a little bit more cramped. I think that if companies start tweaking their applications though with smaller screens in mind, things could work amazingly well on the iPad. We're 80% there already. But let's see how other heavy duty apps work on the iPad. Let's load up ZBrush. Again, come on, that's incredibly cool to see. Like before, we have full control of the program by using the keyboard and pencil, but where things get interesting is that we also have pressure sensitivity. So as we're drawing, we can do thick strokes, thin strokes, everything is interpreted correctly. I think there's a tiny bit of delay in some cases, especially when I draw really fast, but it's a bit difficult to tell. The delay seems to disappear if we connect the iPad to the computer through USB. Again, I'm not sure if this is an issue with the Wi-Fi speed not being fast enough or if there's some sort of uh, incompatibility with the program. Either way though, I can easily see myself using ZBrush with the iPad. I don't feel restrained in any way, and the iPad, because of the keyboard, is propped up at the right angle for drawing. All applications in general feel absolutely fine on the iPad. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but let's do one more. Let's try Photoshop. To test it out, I edited quite a few images solely using the iPad as the main screen. And I must say, it felt great. As I was watching TV, for example, I edited the photos from my last trip. Without being restrained by weird mobile apps, the full featured Photoshop was right there and I could use it exactly how I'm used to on a desktop. It just felt amazing to be able to do that. The other cool thing is that we can have both worlds in one. So I can switch for example to an iPad app and then come back to Sidecar and continue my work. Or I can bring up an iPad app, check something real quick and then continue working on Sidecar. This blurs the line so much that at times it felt like I was using the full-blown desktop apps on the iPad. The integration feels that great. At some point I was working on a heavy scene in cinema and for a split second I thought, is the iPad going to handle such a heavy scene? <laughs> for a moment I forgot that I'm just streaming the contents of the screen and I felt like I was using cinema natively on the iPad. It messes with your head for sure. Of course, it's not all sunshine and roses. There are still a couple of bugs, but keep in mind this is still in beta, so I would expect things to get even better with uh, time. For example, there's an issue with uh, pop-up windows. Sometimes they don't appear on the right screen. When I was uh, using Photoshop, sometimes the pop-up windows for color adjustments were showing up on the main screen and not on the iPad. So, while I was in the living room, I had to get up, move the window to the iPad, and then continue. I'm sure this can be fixed because I'm not seeing it in all applications, and also it doesn't happen all the time. For example, hitting the render button in cinema brings up the picture viewer to the right screen, but for some reason the nodal window pops up on the IMAX screen. Another bug that can be annoying at times is that there is a delay on the keyboard when switching from iPad apps to Sidecar. For some reason the system doesn't release the keyboard soon enough, so there might be a couple of uh, seconds where you cannot do anything with the keyboard and Sidecar. Interestingly enough, in the first couple of betas, I didn't have any keyboard delay issues. This started happening in the last couple builds. So maybe it's a weird bug that will be fixed soon. But, apart from the bugs, developers need to also support the feature. For example, zooming in and out with your hand works in Photoshop, but it doesn't work in other programs. Probably because Photoshop has some support for touchscreens already. I also think that the extra layout options with the touch bar emulation and the extra keys need some rethinking and extra work. The ability to emulate a mouse with more than just one button is not there yet, or at least I couldn't figure out how to do it. In my opinion, all the other extra modes didn't feel as natural as using the keyboard and pen. 
Overall though, I'm just blown away by how well this uh, first version of Sidecar works. It feels great and I hope that it's going to keep getting developed and improved even more through the years. If that happens, I can't imagine how amazing it will get. Apple excels at these sort of things, and I personally would like to see more of them. Another example of this is the ability to use the iPhone or iPad cameras to take a picture directly from the computer. Adding a document on an email is just super fast this way. But I think I've gushed enough uh, about Sidecar. So let's wrap things up for this video. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about Sidecar or if there's anything more you would like to know about it. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.